What's up, y'all? This is Ron Wills coming back at you with an another show with your baby mama favorite cousin, Cousin T Tall. We're going to go do a deep dive into the infamous Alpha Showpiece. What's up, Cousin T Tall? Welcome to this special right here. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling great. This is a, this is a very um, energized weekend. And, and, and Chicago on my end, representing uh, the Midwest, I know you uh, represent the DMV on your end. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's always a pleasure to, to sit down and have a, a discussion with you and uh, your audience. <clears throat> um, because myself and my audience appreciates uh, when the, the meeting of... Uh, you know, different schools of thoughts or collaborative schools of thoughts in terms of the subject matter in our space uh, come to pass. So this is always a treat. And um, I, I, I fully expect there to be uh, some some lessons learned. So I, I would advise those who are listening uh, to, to, to get their libations ready and, and take out pen and paper because that ism's about to be dropped. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I can't wait for it myself. And speaking of ism, yeah, let's get right into it. Yeah, the alpha showpiece. Now, you're the originator of the term, but since you put it out and then I gave my opinion on it, and which I just have to say, you had to correct me. I was like 5% of the male population is at um, ASP and alpha showpiece. You said, no, Uncle Ron. Is less than 1%. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. You're the originator. So tell us exactly what is an alpha showpiece. Let's clear it up for everybody from the originator of the term. Well, definitely. Um, as you uh, and your your audience may know already, uh, is that I'm a former, former exotic entertainer. Um, and uh, after... Uh, my stint as uh, an exotic dancer, um, I taught uh, choreography in that field for uh, individuals who thought they wanted to go into that that line of work. And basically, you know, it, it's about <clears throat> your setup, your presentation, and how you manage the various scenes. Uh, all of these uh, particular points of that activity I bring out in my book, The Seduction Scriptures. And speaking of which, that's where I uh, define the ASP or the alpha show piece, which is basically the ideal or the prototypical uh, male exotic uh, dancer. Six feet, uh, 200 to 220, muscled, uh, chiseled, but the simplest takeaway that, sh that we can remember, you have a, a good face and a good body. It, if anybody could take anything away from that, a man with a, uh, a good face and a good body, meaning that you could be a print model uh, if, if you wanted to in terms of, of your facial symmetry. And if you wanted to... Um, if you wanted to try your luck at getting paid to be naked, then you could do that. That is an alpha showpiece. That is the sort of prototypical um, specimen of the type of man that women would pay to see naked, basically. Well, let me let me be a devil's advocate because you know you got some guys out here. They say, "Oh, it's just the face, just the face," and they don't care about the body. And you know, I promote body game for just that reason. So you're basically saying, "Look, you got a good face, but you got to have that body a woman wants as well." So I'm just like, "Yeah, I mean, it should make sense." But and I, that's what I've always said. I was like, "Okay, who?" Are, you got all these movies. You got recent uh, Magic Mike movie. You got uh, uh, the Las Vegas shows. I don't know how many like male reviews they have on there now. <laughs> it's like it's numerous ones. And it's always on the body. But of course, it helps if the man is handsome. Unless, of course, he's an ugly, sexy player. But that's that's another stream right there. We ain't even going to get into that one. 
Yeah, well, I mean, let's think about it. In order to have uh, the um, presence of an alpha showpiece or a prototype, you have to have uh, the polar opposite, okay? It, it, when, when we talk about that realm or that domain of activity. So if you've got this alpha showpiece, then you have to have the ugly, sexy player in order to qualify <laughs> <laughs> the, the the alpha showpiece. So so how do you know that you're the prototype uh, of attractiveness immediately? The immediate uh, attractiveness for uh, your female audience or your female uh, target. Um, you know that by showing up. Your presentation within that initial um, engagement is going to tell you what that is. But again, like you mentioned before, that's only 1%. If you remember the video, the conversation that you and I had in terms of male body types, mm -hmm. we understand that, um, that women know that the alpha showpiece is elite. The alpha showpiece is rare. Just like when we talk about the dime piece on the other side, on the, uh, the female counterpart of the spectrum, men know that true dimes, true dimes, are extremely rare and there are levels to it okay just like when we talk about the the echelons of dime pieces there are only certain women who uh have the ideal uh physical traits and facial traits whether they're sitting standing um in a bikini fully clothed in corporate wear or whatever very very few women that's a rarefied um uh, you know, presentation or aesthetic. However, mm -hmm. the point of highlighting the alpha show piece, just like the, the point of highlighting a dime piece, is so that we understand what that standard, that 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 sort of um, ultimatum or that absolute standard is, so that we can have a conversation about diversity. And really, when we talk about what game is, game at its core. It's about is about having a diverse approach to social strategy. Mm. When we talk about when we talk about game, okay, let's be clear. Just so we can be, uh, uh, you know, um, on the same page going forward, because terminology in this space is critical. It's it's critical to understand what the, what terminologies uh, represent. So when we talk about game. I want to make sure that we understand that the definition, very ba basic definition of game is social strategy. Now, this yeah. is this is us talking about foundational game. OK, foundational game, you know, the 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 philosophical curriculum of foundational black Americans here in America. Now, there, there are other sides and there are other types of game. You've got commercial game, so-called commercial game that's preached in, in other spaces or the the, the, the so-called manosphere at large where <clears throat> people have their variation of what it means and, and things like that. But in order to really get a grasp of what true game or foundational game is, we have to clarify what this, this terminology represents. And if I could, just for a moment, yeah. we'll get back to, you know, of course, the, the subject of uh, the, the alpha show piece in just a second. But when we talk about foundational game, we have to understand that there are levels to this thing. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> you, you and I uh, are, are preparing for a webinar that is going to be monumental. Uh, 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 if I may, uh, you know, divulge to, to your audience, May 26th. Anybody who's interested in getting the highest quality and the highest level informa of information that cannot be be presented for public consumption on the YouTube side. And we're, we're obviously going to invite our Patreon subscribers to click the link below because I'm sure Uncle Rob is going to put that link down for this exclusive event. The title of that webinar is God Level Game. But in, in order to sort well, of... Well, let me stop you real quick because I don't want to... Uh, anybody who's interested in uh, going, you need to join my... Uh, Raw Brotherhood Patreon. The link is in the description box, and then you can get the link for it from there. For for on my end, I don't. Uh, you you got to you, you got to go through you got to go through a door 
or my, you know, you know, this is that power. So anybody that, that's right. my raw brotherhood uh, Patreon, just uh, click the link is right there. Then you join, then you see how you can even get further into it. So it's right in the description box. Absolutely. And just to set up the, the language around what that particular level of game is, we have to set the, the foundation for the other levels of game, okay? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the, the, the base or general level of game, foundational game, we have to understand that there is elementary level game. An elementary level game is the type of game that we learn as young men, okay? Specifically, young men on the playgrounds of, uh, of these American streets, okay? Basically, when we're learning um, how to interact with, with uh, other boys, how to interact uh, with the girls, when we're learning our native skills, athletics, when we, we're learning communication, when we're learning how uh, to play team sports. But most importantly, as boys, as young men, we are learning basic mating strategy that's elemental game and to be honest on the youtube side that's what a lot of the the content from these spaces is about elementary level game basic level mating strategy now this is the only level of game that uh you have the the young man or the boy side and the 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 young women on the girl side uh you know having parity with okay that's because on the level of elementary game you have native skills and what native skills basically translates to is what a culture learns as children okay and so mm -hmm. if we have those uh sort of bullet points on the the male side on the female uh, side, that's where they're also learning communication. But the girls are learning hierarchical structures. And mo uh, most importantly, if on the male side, we're learning at a, a young age mating strategy, on the female or the girl side, they are learning mate selection. That's a mm -hmm. very, very key point to understand. A lot of times, the reason why uh, men can see can come across as corny or lame to certain women, cer certain demographics of women, is because on that developmental side, uh, when you should be, you know, uh, developing elementary level game or your uh, your mating strategy or just interacting with the opposite sex uh, as children, they're not catching that particular time frame or that those lessons. And mm. so they're missing that. They're missing that for whatever reason. You know, you could you you could name a, a, a thousand reasons uh, as to why um, a a young boy can uh, miss that developmental sort of subject matter uh, coming up. However, yeah, a lot of females still uh, receive that uh, subject matter on the elementary level of game when they're developing their native skills. And so mm -hmm. they're looking for that behavior, that socialized behavior and on the male side. And when they don't see those cues, then I'm like, oh, okay, this dude is corny or this, this dude is lame. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not to negate the, the um, integration of social skills in terms of technical uh, knowledge. So you've got native skills, which are, uh, available to certain demographics just in their native environment. That's why it's referred to as native skills. But you have technical skills, which is STEM, right? Science, technology, uh, you know, uh, uh, engineering. They've added art, math, uh, and, and, and things of that nature. Those are secondary skills. Mm -hmm. And then you have advanced skills, which is, you know, political science, you know, so, uh, social science, uh, you know, law, all of these other um, specialized skills that you acquire uh, further on in life. And what, what men in this space and these spaces tend to do is attempt to conflate uh, secondary and advanced skills and compare that to native skills. 
skills that are learned in certain environment in certain native environments at a very young age when the barber you know takes a, takes a young brother under his wing when the uncle takes a you know his his nephew under his wing you know when your older cousin or your dad if if you if you're so fortunate to have uh that that figure in your life or your stepdad takes you under his wing and teaches you or laces you with that level of game at a young age and what we're finding is that a lot of men have missed that developmental uh uh curriculum growing up and so on the youtube side and we're finding that in, in coaching sessions in private coaching sessions that we we need to take it back to the basics or the elementary uh level when uh understanding where a man is in his abilities to uh present man gets woman okay man shit you, you done took it to another level the dudes they watch it it's like hey man we just got to do with the alpha show piece <laughs> it's every day Hey, but one thing, uh, let me just say this before we go further and really uh, do that dive into the Alpha Show piece. Anyone interested on my side? Well, also on Cousin Tito's side, you need to join his Patreon. You need to join his Patreon. A link for it will be in the description box. Uh, my Raw Brotherhood Patreon. That's where we uh, will have the webinars, including also... Uh, Copies of the other webinars we've done by uh, Scorpio, Master Teacher BGS, uh, the Honorable Alan Roger Curry, he has one. So we we have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff. Uh, Master Yao, uh, the Pimp God, everything. So definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. But everything you said, somebody will still be like, okay, can I be an alpha showpiece? I mean, what, I mean... That's deeper than just a male exotic dancer. I remember we talked about that privately. That is going, that, that's something going back into history. Um, if you don't mind just sharing just the history of the alpha show piece. I mean, just on a larger level, maybe not so much that term, but that that hunk or whatever you want to call them, that prime specimen. I mean, that's always been in existence. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um, when we talk about uh, our history here in, in America, and this is obviously, okay. you know, uh, 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 just for example, this is you know, this is this is post-colonial, right? Um, yeah, so-called. But when we talk about uh, the the heroes, when we talk about uh, mm. those those fantasy characters, okay, <clears throat> we think about. Um, someone who's like a Harry Belafonte, rest in peace to him recently. Uh, that leading man, that okay. that that you know, a, a Paul Robeson. When we talk about, um, you know, on the on the the sort of European side, the the John Wayne or, um, you know, the Clint Eastwood, the 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 bad boy, mm -hmm. right? Um, the the type of, of the the archetype of a man who uh, was born to rebel against the, the, the status quo. But mm -hmm. he's also the ultimate protector. Mm -hmm. And this is, a, this is sort of a, a biological sort of driver um, that is stimulated within women who, um, that, that points to a type of man who will um, go against conventional thinking mm -hmm. uh, in an effort to not only protect her, but to deliver to her an experience that's unlike any other. So you've got men who are socialized. You got men who are, um, you know, uh, sort of socially engineered to follow the societal norms, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what what that may look like in in a, in a in a particular social setting. But then you've got the bad boy. Then you've got the rebel without a cause, right? That uh, to, to to reference that movie, there is a certain a particular archetype uh, of uh, a man with the stature, uh, with the presentation, uh, you know, that wears the 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 leather jacket or that wears the the the, the tank top or who can wear nothing at all um, and uh, immediately um, attract or spark 
within a, a woman's subconsciousness and her conscious mind that she wants to re uh, replicate him. Uh, mm. it, he's presenting mm. um, a maximum sort of array of genetic fitness. Okay, and in that, if the crowd is, is you know, will will we'll, um, jump over a, a cliff like lemmings, or or you know, mm. go with convention. Um, and bring her this predictable, boring, uh, you know, mundane experience, that Alpha Showpiece is going to unapologetically go against convention and bring her the experience of a lifetime, which is really what, um, when, when we're training um, exotic entertainers, that's really what you're developing in terms of your individual uh, method or your individual presentation of that archetype now obviously not every man uh hits that archetype even within uh the exotic entertainment space but as we discussed in a previous uh conversation the ideal so that you've got the ultimate right the if, if the asp or the alpha show piece is the ultimate body type or presentation or masculine presentation the ideal uh body type if you remember of masculine presentation in terms of a sensual sort of signature is the bedroom body. So you've got the, mm -hmm. the alpha show piece, you know, he's got six feet, six feet tall. He's got the, the six pack visible, uh, six pack. He's muscular. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's got that soul pole. Have you, have you want to say it? That grown man mm -hmm. kickstand, however you want to say it. Uh, but then you've got the man who has the bedroom body who is capable okay. that rough neck, who has the um, the stature of a capable man who is capable of lifting a woman, who's capable of building a house, who's capable of defending her um, in, in a manner uh, that uh, brings and protects the next generation uh, in, in, into the world. So, Well, okay, okay, okay then, because, yeah, because that'll be a thing, because, of course, you get a lot of guys trying to work to be an ASP, and I want to get into that in a second, but then I had done a recent uh, car video basically saying, oh, you're not an ASP, but that's okay. Work on the other stuff, and you just presented that. Okay, you're not an ASP, but a man who can physically just do stuff. He might not have the six pack abs and all of that, but if he can just do stuff, he can pick her up, he can make things happen. That's just his power. And a woman, you know, they pragmatic, they just be like, oh, let me get that guy. Let me get that guy. But one of the things I wanted to get into about the ASP, um, a lot of guys think, okay, I'm going to work to be an ASP. How, how how much of it is genetic? Now, that's one thing I say. If you got to correct me, I don't mind. This is your this is your wheelhouse right here. How much of it really is genetic, and how what's the likelihood of the average man out here building himself into an ASP? Well, let's keep in mind <clears throat> if if we're using the standard of six feet tall, genetically, that's out of you know, a, a lot of men's wheelhouse, if the average height of the American man is five, nine. Um, okay. But, but that's just one sort of point within the qualification. Um, <clears throat> anybody can, um, can diet and exercise their way to reveal their abs. What that will look like with the rest of their um, physical anatomy, that's going to vary. That's going to vary on your age. Uh, again, your uh, heredity genetically, mm. um, your diet, and whether or not you're uh, you're taking special supplements. But you know, depend you know depending on you know who you are and, and, and what your goals are. So, mm. not everybody can meet that height requirement, but the vast majority of men can um, exercise and diet their way to having visible abs. But I really want to. Uh, put out there as a reminder if your goal is to become or to become like that ASP or Alpha Showpiece archetype and that's sort of like your vision if you remember um, if you've ever followed uh, bodybuilders back in the day right um, you know my, my stepdad had uh, the the privilege 
of um, you know working out with Lee Haney. If anybody, you know, just Google mm-hmm. Lee Haney for the young, younger people uh, back in the day. Uh, but growing up as kids, we would have these pictures of the Mr. Olympias, uh, mm-hmm. you know, posters on our wall, right? You know, yeah. Dorian Yates, um, uh, Nasser Zambati, um, uh, of course, Lee Haney, uh, of, of course, King, uh, Ronnie Coleman. Everybody knew that, that they were not going to, um, to replicate those physiques. Uh, but they had an archetype to keep their focus on okay to to look at the the various developments because each one of those uh champions that i mentioned they're champions for different reasons obviously Mm -hmm. the the goal is overall symmetry right and and Mm -hmm. so that you present an aesthetic uh physique that is uh that that presents a maximized musculature okay uh, depending on what the judges of uh, the Mr. Olympia committee uh, is, is going for, for that particular era. Okay. Mm-hmm. But there's always a standard. There's always an archetype that is set by the, the, the champions. All right. And then that's really what the goal of presenting the alpha showpiece archetype is not. A, so when we take it back to the uh, world of exotic entertainment the alpha showpiece goes on last he's not the first performer he's not the opener mm. he is the closer he is the one that's put on that 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 plugger okay he's the one that is the draw and everyone else um who's in that lineup uh he, they are the ones that are the build-up for the the mm. main event okay so Women have their favorites. Women have the the entertainer that um, sort of tickles their fancy, that fulfills some sort of fa- um, fantasy for her. However, that alpha showpiece, he closes out the show. He is the one who is, um, you know, the, the the sort of tip of the spear. And okay. when it, when, however, let's be clear. He relies on the other entertainers to uh, give depth and dimension and to fill various roles within that show space. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why you have these show pieces. Okay. You've got the exotic show piece, you've got the ugly, sexy player. And of course, you've got the alpha show piece. Just like um, when you have, uh, you know, in uh, in in opera right you, you you've got the diva but you've also got this you know the soprano and you've got the the other octaves of concertinas or singers the diva is what uh you know sells the bill she's you know she she is the one who everybody expects to 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 see and to br- sort of to sort of bring down the house but all of these other pieces um, are what give depth and dimension and um, creativity and color to the the fullness of the show. And that's oh, really yeah. what I want to bring across when we talk about um, uh, the alpha show piece. It's an archetype that it's understandable that the vast majority of men um, won't hit that. But some, some will. Mm. Um, but it's a way of identifying and level setting who you honestly are and then going from that because like we uh, like i mentioned earlier you have to know who you are not in order to embrace who you are if you know who if you know who you are not then you're on a a better sort of path of of Mm -hmm. discovering who you truly are and what what the alpha showpiece archetype does for um, a, a man who's on, on his journey of masculine mastery is gives him a standard. And, and that's why we like to present that. Here's a standard that is uh, an absolute or an ultimate, okay? Where are you in terms of how you measure up to this particular standard? If you are honest enough with yourself and your coach or your mentor or your teacher, to say that that's not me. 
you are well on your way. You are coachable. You are teachable. You are someone who can be mentored into uh, the space of self discovery. But that first, that first initial sort of moment when okay, it's just like all of those um, those those uh, podcasts when they talk to different women, uh, especially when they have those panels and they ask a, a woman to rate themselves, right? And 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 and, and, and rest in peace to to the Godfather Kevin Samuels. Uh, I, I think that women were more honest with him, but with these panels, they're just out of control. All yeah. of the women say that they're a ten, that yeah. they're that they're uh, uh, a dime piece. But what that shows and what that highlights is that men and women have a very different relationship with reality. Okay, yeah. Yeah. we we, ha- we we approach reality very very differently, and especially when we talk about teachers, mentors, and coaches of the game. Part of our responsibility and our duty, uh, you know, to our mentees, to our students, and to our clients, is to give them the tools and structure to qualify reality itself. And that's really what, um, at the higher levels of gain, uh, what we're doing, what's actually happening. Well, before we get really, because I want to, because I got three things I want to get into, and trust me, it's going to take a bit. And the game part, I want to like deal with that last. I want okay. to get, like want to get into the game part last. I want to finish up really with the um, the main part of the alpha show piece. Now you were talking about how everything is set up in the club setting. You know, the ugly, sexy player, the exotic player, all of that within the club, and then the alpha show piece. That's the main. That's the main event. How does that translate into the real world? Like situations where it could be a social setting, it could be a school, it could be an office. You <laughs> yeah. an office fuck file. Um, how how does that how does that translate that alpha show piece when they are uh, either the alpha show piece or the man that comes the closest in that environment or just the dominant man in that environment? How did, how does that translate? Listen, that that's a great question. That is a wonderful question. Um, so I'll take the office fuck file for example. Okay? okay, and this is something that again I break down in the seduction scriptures. But we all, I mean, there are also uh, you know videos on YouTube that that break down this dynamic and on Patreon. But basically, well, before you go forward, uh, let me just announce a link to the seduction scriptures is in the description box. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So go on. I had to I had to put that plug in for your book. It's no. <laughs> it's one of the few books that I'm learning something from. I'm like cousin Tito. I'm gonna just be real with you. No disrespect to uh, any other coaches, anybody, but cousin Tito is one of the very very few I learned something new from. So no, I appreciate that. I appreciate the high oh, compliment definitely. coming from you. Um, but yeah, if we're if we're gonna compare it because the show space or the exotic entertainment space is a very unique space. Um, and, and there are few, if any, spaces in the real world or the vanilla world that mirror the show space. Um, but what, but what, one comparable dynamic uh, with the, uh, that compares to the alpha showpiece dynamic is within the office fuck file, the office Adonis. And the office mm-hmm. Adonis is that guy who all the women... You know, uh, they don't necessarily want him as a work husband, but they want to go to lunch, quote unquote, do a lunch with him or uh, or or take take an office uh, trip with him, uh, you know, as a part of 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 the sales team or uh, have a a situation in the 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 copier room in which they need him to lift the box. Or, or, or some scenario in which they're in close proximity to, to this guy. The office Adonis would, would fit the bill. He comes in. You know uh, what? <laughs> I got to stop you there, man. Because, you, know, you know, I'm the OG now, but I remember back in the day in a couple offices, one, I started something. This woman wanted to take me out right away. She was about to get in a fight with this other woman because I wasn't talking to her. The other one was man, he was to me. And then there was another job. It was uh, 
it was an office environment and it was a group of women in there. And then I was in there, I ain't noticed anything. I had a girlfriend at the time and you know, they were friendly enough in there, right? But then I remember when I was uh, moved to another section, but still had connections to the office and this woman, and she was married. She, I don't, I don't think she was interested. She was like, you should be arrested. I was like, arrested for what? <laughs> breaking hearts. It's hard step breaking. <laughs> wrong you got about five women in there trying to get with you and when you said that lunch thing one of the baddest women in there wanted to go out to lunch with me. and I, I didn't even think about it i was like i, I was just totally oblivious because my mind wasn't wasn't there i was with someone um i was with somebody at the time and really into her because you know she had a big fat ass and but this this baddie she wanted to go to lunch she she offered to pay. I was like, oh sure, shoot you paying, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute, I don't think she just want to talk business or anything. <laughs> I was like, and that offers, hey, trust me. And I, I've seen that in situations with some younger guys, especially. It's a different vibe when you get older, more established. You could probably go into that, but more. But that's a real thing. That's a real thing. I mean, shoot, I've been in situations seen situations you know you got some women on the job and you it's getting back to you that they saying this about dude or they asking so uh what's up with him like it was working retail and this woman she was just young young sexy woman she was asking about this guy i was like yeah what's she was like what's up with him yeah cool everything and i i ain't hear anything else but then i saw him later they said okay you never saw so i'm like yeah yeah she came over my place i hit it Oh, man. <laughs> Go into the office, fuck file, because that's when you're going to know some stuff. The office of Donis. Mm. Yeah, and and, it, and that dynamic, it, it's a slight variance depending on the, the type of work environment. You know, mm. uh, a, a corporate space as opposed to an auto mechanic shop where you have the 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 accounting office that's, you know, you, you got, you got, you tend to have uh, more women in the accounting space but now you have you know you're having more female mechanics um you know interacting with the with the men but basically the office fuck file um rests on this sort of um corporate structure in which you have people interacting with each other now like i said at the top of the food chain would be the office adonis and women within that dynamic like i said they have a bit more leverage than they do within the exotic entertainment space. Okay. Because that is, um, a sort of shadow world esque or, you know, sh shadow world adjacent space. Whereas in the vanilla world and the, uh, office fuck file, you have the presence of the shadow world of the sexual shadow world. Mm -hmm. And so, um, outside of the office Adonis, who you know, a lot of women are are, are specifically trying to um, to have sex with. Let's just be clear, mm -hmm. they're not trying to date this guy. They're not trying to marry this guy. They're they're not trying to have him be the stepdaddy or whatever. They are trying to bed this guy. So let's be clear about that particular dynamic. Then you have uh, you know uh, the 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 subsequent sort of uh, rank and file. Uh, members or, or male members of you know that office hierarchy okay uh, you've got the suit and tie guy uh, who is a good presenter who has that mouthpiece who knows how to dress he may not necessarily be the office adonis but he's got the personality skills and he has the mouthpiece piece in order to um carry across his intent okay he's got that ism he can speak to um, and ask the, the right questions to get him into those spaces. But mm -hmm. also he practices a level of discretion so mm -hmm. that the, the, the women who he gets with in the office understand and appreciate that whatever uh, gets done there stays there, okay? But yeah. let's be clear, in an office dynamic, people can smell who's smashing each other, okay? Mm -hmm. And women talk. They share stories and they share yes the, the stats of the men like baseball cards or a basketball card or, or 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 scouting 
uh, they, they scout the men with their stats uh, in, in those office settings. So well, that's, let me that's, interject that's, something. Let me interject yeah. something just uh, real quick because you brought it out earlier when you were talking about the game that we learn in a natural environment, a native environment, and you mentioned mate selection. It's one thing a lot of men don't get. Pimps understand this and serious players understand this, how women choose. They're already sizing you up. They're already talking. They're already establishing who's going to get the first shot. You know, you talk about the fade groups, you know, the queen bee, you know, the, the, oh man, it's, it, you, you know the terms. It's escaping my yeah. mind now, mm-hmm. but everybody has their place. Who gets what first? The queen bee gets to eat first. Right. That guy comes into the office, you know, the baddest woman in there, she decides what she's going to do first. And if she don't happen to warn him, okay, she pass him on to the next guy. They they are always doing that. A lot of guys don't understand that. They think the women are just being quiet, but the the women always know. They always are doing that mate selection piece. And that's very important to understand when, they, when there's a group of women in an environment, any men in there, trust me, the women are talking. They making they making recommendations. And honestly, if all the women are avoiding the guy, because all he need to do is mess up with the wrong one or don't realize they doing that. In situations like that, I would tell guys kind of sit back and kind of let it come to them. Don't, don't go for that first woman. She might not, the queen bee might've been checking you out and she's like, wait a minute, you, you ain't doing this right. Hold up. It's like, wait a minute, you know? I mean, it's yeah. that key. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta know that game in there and where you really stand. It, yeah, no, it's a very good point. And let's understand that it, the work environment is this mirror of the the domestic environment. And I say domestic environment because if you live in a, in a, a, a um, close knit community, that's a domestic environment that is chaired or led by uh, a sort of uh, queen bee archetype. There mm-hmm. is a woman within your homeowners association who's at the top of the food chain. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the, the um, social culture, let me be clear about when I say this social culture, because there's, there's a difference between social culture, meaning the socialized behavior uh, of a culture as opposed to the material culture or the, the intellectual, intellectual and artist, uh, artistic property of a culture. But that socialized culture is uh, dictated by uh, a woman who's at the top of that structure. So that same thing translates over into the office environment. And so mm-hmm. that that queen bee, um, she has already established her presence within the office hierarchy. And so different teams are set up and arranged depending on, you know, again, the type of business that we're talking about in a way that allows her to get first pick or that allows the the women in her clique or, uh, or fay group um, to be first, to get first selection or to bet the, the type of man so she'll send out her scout. <laughs> okay, the queen, queen bee will send out, you know, the top mistress, the bottom mistress, or the sub mistress within within that hierarchy to to go vet you. And their job could be to flirt with you to see if you're gonna bite. Mm-hmm. So there, there's so many. The, the way that we got our game, like I said, and this is pub, This is part of the beauty of spaces like this. We we get to observe you know, human behavior and, and how we uh, engage in this dance, you know, from uh, the perspective of, uh, you know, experienced observers from the perspective yeah. of, you know, uh, learned, developed teachers and mentors. And this is, you know, part of the value of what we provide to, to, the, to the men in these spaces. But um, that dynamic of, the hierarchy at, at in a in an office setting always 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 has historically played to the um, dominant man at the top of the hierarchy and the dominant female at the top of that uh, that office hierarchy. 
more so it's it's more so swung in the direction of of the female but depending on what uh, uh, a a guy is trying to get out of his work life he do well to understand these dynamics that are at play because if a woman happens to be in a position of power the way that he engages socially and 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 navigates the the social sort of dynamic within an office space could determine or impact his outcomes depending on what he's looking to achieve okay. within those spaces so beyond just um you know mating strategy so again on the male side it's mating strategy on the female side it's mate selection okay so That's again powerful, powerful in itself <laughs> Yeah, we, we want to make sure we, we, we differentiate um, between these two dynamics because it's a it's a key component of understanding the various levels of the game. And, and before we get to that, I, I want to make sure we, we get to the remainder of your questions. Uh, oh, but okay. just to, to, yeah, just just well, to we're going to do that. So, it, OK, one of the things, too, I wanted to go back to what you say about how the alpha show piece uh affects a woman on a biological thing a biological level that gets past a lot of the artificialness that's out here because a lot of it you know people are talking about money status and all of that and of course a woman to say well his credit score is this that money is this you know um the, their social class is this but that man who could hit them on such a level, all that goes out the door. Like that woman who may be that professional woman, she got a lot of money saying, she says, oh, I won't deal with this type of man. I won't deal with this type of man. He driving a bus in here. <laughs> uh, or something like that. But then that ASP come in the picture and it's just like, yeah, hey, um, here's my phone number right here. <laughs> something like this. Oh, man. And after we finish, act like you don't know me, <laughs> you know, when we see each other in public. That's a very good point. Um, and again, again, you know, it's a wonderful question. So what we're talking about when you mentioned artificial um, filters, what we're talking about uh, are social biases. And mm -hmm. part of what the game does, learning game and understanding game, is it identifies what those biases are and yeah. how they're imposed upon the individual. So yeah. basically what a bias is, is a social filter. Mm -hmm. So at, at, at our base level, we need biases. I'm mm -hmm. biased towards preserving my life. I'm biased towards protecting, you know, uh, the, the, the lives of my loved ones. So those are, so biases are necessary. Okay. However, like you mentioned, we have a lot of uh, externally imposed artificial biases or artificial filters that don't necessarily, um, you know, uh, facilitate our biological imperative. And this is what uh, we're, we're getting at when we talk about how uh, a, a, an alpha showpiece um, sort of overrides a lot mm -hmm. of those filters, those social filters, or those uh, externally imposed biases for women in particular. And just like you mentioned, yes, if a, if a uh, an alpha show piece shows up and um, the opportunity presents itself, because that's that's really what that's that's really all you know women have. Okay, <laughs> uh, beauty and opportunity. W whereas men, all we have our uh you know our name and our nuts all right that's that's, <laughs> that's it so but if, if a woman depending on what never mind her stature her status or you know where, wherever she is um even if she would not quote unquote marry a bus driver she's in the she finds her she happens to find herself in the presence of an alpha showpiece if the opportunity presents itself she's definitely going to put yeah. her bid in or put herself, uh, present herself as available. Um, and how that plays out, that is affected by, you know, those biases or those social filters of class, mm -hmm. of um, status, mm -hmm. of location, because all of those need to be negotiated with what I refer to as 
the logistics of the encounter. And that's on the man's side. If he determines... So let's just say a man in general, he doesn't necessarily have to be an alpha showpiece. If he finds himself in the space of a, a woman who has indicated that she's attracted to him and she 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 purely wants this uh, intimate exchange, let's, let's be clear about what we're talking about. When we talk about biology, we talk about getting down to what it is. The get down is about an intimate exchange, okay? Mm -hmm. However, she find, uh, he has... Um, acknowledge and identify that she is of a different social status or different class. The higher up you go in class structures, the less people there are. And with the less, uh, the, 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 the lower populace or the less the population is, the quicker word gets around. Mm. And so your reputation is extremely valuable and it, it is to be extremely protected in the upper classes. Yeah. Okay, and obviously that plays out. So a, a man would do well to acknowledge that and understand that and appreciate protecting that. That's a part of his protection that he's providing for this particular woman that he's uh, interaction interacting with. He needs to be uh, aware that his discretion is what's going to uh, factor into protecting her status for the purpose of the exchange of intimacy. That's just one example of uh, a man, you know, using the um, alpha showpiece archetype, but applying gain to a social interaction with a particular woman he desires to acquire, even if she's of a different class structure. Okay. And I'm going to tell you what, and you know, that's a good segue into gain because, okay, if and yeah i know we started off deep dive into the alpha show piece and that's very you gave some great information but let's be real some guys out here know they don't have that stature quite frankly some guys can be i've been in, worked out in several gyms and some guys can go in there go hard sweat and all that and they ain't gonna get there but but that's where real game comes in. It's really just whatever strategy you want to use, how you want to navigate the interactions between men and women. That's it. Because, okay, if you're an alpha showpiece, shoot, all you have to do is really pay attention. Everybody else needs game. And now you get some people, you get some guys out here and they'll say, well, I don't need game. I don't need game. You need to think of something because just the situation you outlined, you got to, you got to, you got to think, okay, what's the situation? Uh, can I be discreet? That's game. You know, game is also picking up, reading the situation, reading the outline, you in a certain environment, you got to be thinking, okay, that one woman over there, she checking me out, but and she's a chatty booba laddie. She, she, you know, she might talk a bit more. Another woman, she might be that type. Shoot, she'd be like driving by your house at one in the morning and the type who, if you park in the wrong place, you come out, your tires slashed and your car ain't starting because there's sugar in your uh, gas tank, you know? So, but that's part of game two is reading the situation. But it goes back to what you start talking about at first, which is very important. The elementary level of game, just interacting period with women. Like one of the things I always say, I say my experience in all of this is based on actual experience. With the exception of maybe someone in your field and someone like yourself, I've interacted with more women than the average man out here. I mean, that's just it. And it's not always sex. Even in rejections, even in shooting a shot and getting rejected, okay, learn from that. That's why I talk about a tribe. I can look at a woman and tell pretty much she's going to be receptive. It never fails. I can look at a body type, you know, but that's game right there. But see, a big problem is a lot of guys, you got some guys, they think, oh, they can just bop along out here. But what did you say about the woman's game is mate selection. So Correct. you gotta think, okay, what is it about you that you're going to 
that you want to be selected, selected, non-select, this women's selection criteria. That's what that whole thing is about right there. Who they going to select, who they going to choose, what environment you in, you know? And I talked about, you know, the more natural, the Mr. Good Bar types. Those the ones got that sex appeal, you know, either close, generally they're going to be more uh, along those roughneck lines, you know? Roughnecks, uh, you want to get some ASPs in there. There's an uh, overlap. They're not really separate. You got any ASP is automatic good bar, but all a, uh, all good bars aren't ASPs, but they at least develop themselves. They select it for sex. But then you got the masked man. That's more on the social bias thing. They can pass the woman's social bias test. That's still game. Because a man, he can build himself into it, but he has to match that social bias. You know, let's use in the bus driver example. You know, if he's a professional man, he got those degrees, he got all of that, and then he matches whatever the current thing in the culture is. He matches whatever image that uh, the women are selecting. If he can match the social image, he's wearing that mask, even though they might not like what's under it, but that's the current social thing. That, That changes. (laughs) <laughs> That's the one thing that that'll change every few years anyway. But in general, right now, that's the successful man who looks like he's the master of the universe at the very least. And he's going to tend to be anyway. But then you go over to another culture, it might be a different type of man. You know, it depends on where you at. You know, it could depends on what neighborhood you in. You know, so it could be different on a college campus, but it can also be different in a housing project. But that's still game right there. That's still game. And even for the guys who, you know what, they don't, they don't get that body, they don't get that uh, raw sex appeal, they don't match the social bias, it's still game for how they're going to get some pussy anyway. They got to figure out which women going to be receptive. There's some guys out there that they generally non-select or guys will say, nah, they betas or something like that. Actually have a decent, uh, fairly high sex camp or decent sex count anyway, because they just figured out through game which women are going to re- be receptive to whatever they spit. Now, the women might not be those dimes, because dimes are very rare, but that's game. But all of it still come down just to interacting with the woman. And that's Correct. the thing. That is the thing. But a lot of guys, that uh, what I'm seeing is... Because what we have out here, I want you to uh, add uh, your perspective on. What I'm seeing incredibly is, and that's like you got a bunch of guys out here. Of course, they say it was looks, 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 right? But yet, um, I'm uh, my channel has been getting a lot of traction lately, picking up subscribers because of the handsome man videos. And the guys are coming in the comments saying, "Well, I've been told I'm handsome, but I'm having trouble." Okay, so it's more than being handsome and then there's you got plenty of guys they got money guys say well, it's just money 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 they got money and you know they got a trick you know even some guys who might have a certain status but the thing is you still gotta interact with the women that's where the game comes in game is really just that interaction that's why you get some guys who don't have the classic looks some guys who don't have money don't have the status but they can interact with, they can shoot the breeze with the woman. That's the game. What are your thoughts on all of that? Well, I mean, that, that was all, of course, well said, very well said. And that ties um, succinctly into uh, the overall conversation that we're having. When we talk about my contribution to the game um, in terms of uh, what I uh, discuss or disseminate in terms of game subject matter, I bring a perspective on seduction. That's just one subject uh, under the the um, curriculum of game. You've also got um, uh, identity, right? You've got game coaches who focus on identity. You've got game coaches who focus on relationships. You got game coaches who uh, or teachers or mentors who focus on man gets woman. But we're talking about the various levels of the game. Now, I just mentioned the elementary level, which is the general level um, of the game curriculum. Yes. Above that 
and more uh, and more um, into what you were just describing is intermediate game. So you've got elementary game at the bottom at the base. Then you've got intermediate game, in, intermediate game above that, which goes into relationships, which goes into class structures, which goes into vocation, which goes into how those um, elements factor into a man's social strategy, which is the definition of game, foundational game. Let me be clear. Uh, how, do, how, how does the average man synthesize these particular components into, um, you know, approaching his desired outcomes? That's the uh, level of intermediate game. So you've got the elementary game, the elementary level, which um, covers your native skills, okay? You've got the intermediate level that's above that that covers uh, vocation, that covers relationship dynamics uh, and, and, and class uh, navigation. Above that, we have advanced game level, the advanced game level, which covers the philosophy of, uh, of, of game. Now, when I say the philosophy of game, I am talking about how a mentor, teacher, or, or coach presents the, the sort of um, universal underpinnings of reality itself. Okay, so when I say philosophy, how does this all how does this all tie together? That's why so many people are so quick to say, "Oh, you don't need the game for anything." Really, what what brand of game are you talking about? You see, this is why it's important to have these conversations because we have to be discerning in, ter in terms of what type of game uh, we're consuming. Like I said, what we preach here or, uh, or, or present here is foundational game. In other spaces, they present commercial game. Say these lines mm. or, uh, you know, a looks, money and status. It's very surface. It's very plastic. It's very generic. They can't go deep, um, you know, like we're able to go deep because one, what they're trying to do is create this, this sort of watered down version of romanticism. Okay. Mm -hmm. And foundational game is not about romanticism because it reflects the culture that emerged game in the first place. Game did not emerge and, uh, you know, the, the, the Western European uh, classic tradition. What a lot of commercial game purveyors are presenting, um, you know, as their version of so-called game is this pseudo-romanticism. Okay, they're talking about, you know, the, the, the Romeo and the Casanovas, where mm -hmm. we're talking about the Mac and Marvin Gaye. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that those are key differences uh, to highlight and to discern when we're talking about brands of game. This is foundational game here. Over there, you've got this this commercial sort of pickup artist, you know, manipulation style. Over here, we're talking about a ph philosophical curriculum that is uh, the social strategy of uh, our specific. Uh, demographic okay now that's not to say that other demographics can't learn from it it's just like saying um eastern eastern uh uh pe people who live in the east can't learn something from western philosophy or people who live in the west can't learn something from eastern philosophy mm -hmm. of course they can they, they can learn something from each other but they have to first acknowledge that there's a different uh, a difference in philosophies in and of itself. So yeah. at the base level, we've got elementary game. All right. So that's the, the development of native skills. On top of that, we've got intermediate, uh, the intermediate level of game, which discusses relationships, vocation, class um, observations and such. On top of that, we've got advanced game, which is the philosophical curriculum of game, which includes how we, as mentors, teachers, and coaches present the universal underpinnings of reality itself from the perspective of, uh, of the originators of game, which is foundational here to America. Above mm. that, I know, gas, take a gas. 
take take a, take a breather. Above that, we have God level game, and that's where we're going to leave that here because yeah. that is that is the the level that is not necessarily presented for public consumption. That mm. level of the game will definitely be discussed um, on May 26th in a private uh, webinar. Click the link below to get this level, this high level uh, of information so that you can further integrate that into your journey of masculine mastery. And just to be clear, the links will actually be uh, to my Raw Brotherhood Patreon. That's not my main one. That's the one I do the, uh, the uh, webinars on. And also to Cousin Tito's Patreon. Both of those links are in the description box. But let's get back to uh, just the levels that you did throw out something and all of them go deep. Especially when you were talking about that commercial thing, because that's a criticism I have, you know, okay, like people say, oh, it just takes looks, money and status, but you still got to talk to the woman, you know, I mean, and even with the looks thing, uh, despite what people like to try to say, that's, that's uh, subjective. And even then you might not get the woman wet. They can look at a guy and say he handsome and keep walking. You Correct. Know? And then <laughs> status, I mean, you know, the woman still might not be impressed with that. You still got to talk to the woman. You still got to navigate. What happens when she got her own money and status too? What happens when she ain't enamored with your looks? Now, does that mean you don't get her? No, it just means that way ain't going to work for her. But then you got some guy go up and just talk with her, get her laughing or something, use a serious mouthpiece and shoot. He gets all the pie. So it's like, <laughs> that's again, a very it's good that point. Connection. And I'm going to tell you what. Um, but then what I'm seeing, what I was saying earlier, what I'm seeing is a lot of guys, they having trouble making that connection. I, I still get guys saying, well, what do I say to women? Like, just talk. Just talk. And, but yeah. I'm seeing it. But see, here's the problem I had. This is a problem I had. I'm seeing it from a different perspective. I'm like thinking that's an easy thing because that was something I learned as a child. That was a part of the community. See, that's one thing. When people talk about game, you talk about foundational stuff. We learned that. I mean, when we were little, you had elders saying, okay, yeah, you got to get a good haircut. Yeah, go over there and talk to that girl or something. You already practice. We already interacting with the girls. And then, you know, you get a little old, you play and spin the bottle. You know, you play and spin the bottle or hide and go get. You already right. had the interactions. You ain't even hit puberty yet. You've had basic interactions with the girls. But right. I'm seeing a lot of guys not having that and they, you know, those are the ones who will get called corny or, you know, they don't know what to say and all of this. <clears throat> They'll be, they'll be up in age. And I'm like, I don't know, just say hi. You know? It's seriously, just right. talk. And it's not any magic words you got to use or anything. But my, my thing is, it's so a natural thing. I'm like, I'm thinking you can't do that. But then I'm finding out a lot of guys can't. You got a lot of guys, they interact with a woman, but they're so nervous. They're thinking about it. It isn't a natural thing. It isn't a natural thing. You know, just that just a regular interaction or they haven't had that little girl doing the mate selection. I remember with my sons when they were little, they were little. We were living in a house and all the little girls in, would come up to the house. In fact, I remember it was out one time with my sons and, you know, with my co-parent. We had a restaurant. My son's just a toddler. This little girl came from another table over there, you know? There's so many stories. They were doing that mate selection thing, but that's a basic thing. But then you got a lot of um, guys who didn't grow up like that. And they'll, of course, they'll say, well, he must've looked cute. He must've did all that. But, you know, girls, if you really leave it to women, they are not just going to look at just one mate. They going, they'll look at what they got in the crowd. Yeah, they'll pick the best ones, but it could be three or four boys that had that crush on or something. Oh, that's another thing about it, too, especially when a little girls hit puberty. 
they will definitely have a crush on some little boy. It they will have invariably. And but you still gotta have certain things about you. You still need to fix yourself up, even if you're not an alpha showpiece. And you know, you typically ain't gonna truly be that to you're an adult anyway. But you still got had, had to have some things about you and something about you that just intrigued her. You know, like I remember right. elementary school, I wore a Cub Scout uniform to school one time and I found out two or three girls had a crush on me <laughs> wearing it. But, you know, it's just like that. You just you just learn that interaction. But that's the biggest thing. A lot of guys, they don't interact with women you know or girls or they didn't have it so of course they get into the commercial stuff like say do this do this and a lot of you got now you got whole communities of guys who are frustrated because it still didn't work for them but right. it and then, natural and i think it's very important uh, as, as as you highlighted uh very well to understand that there's a difference in philosophies because of the material conditions of the origin point of foundational game versus commercial game so mm -hmm. if commercial game is this sort of um uh you know neo romantic you know western perspective on uh, on uh mating then foundational game emerges from spaces that do not have the same material reality as mm. the, the the sort of romanticized so you're not you're not bringing um cars with poetry and chocolates and flowers because that's not that's not a material reality uh in, in the foundational uh space you have to rely on your mouthpiece and the uh, the experience that you're able to bring to a woman that's one of the key differences and that's why we're very specific when we we discern between foundational black american game and commercial game because mm -hmm. The material conditions in which it emerged itself are completely different. It's not about <laughs> you try to bring women from certain demographics, flowers and, and chocolates and candies and, and, and see, see how far you get with that. OK, that that in and of itself is seen as uh, alien and foreign. Mm. They're looking to see if you have the ability to um, communicate uh, in, a, in an improvisational manner, because we're always a, we're always uh, having to think on our feet. We're always having to move from one space to another space out of necessity. And mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> from that emerges a philosophy and a presentation style where you have to be able to freestyle. You got to be able to freestyle rap. Or you need to be able to trade bars just like in jazz uh, in an improvisational space in order to really um, be able to communicate your intent from the perspective of foundational game. That is at the core, not only of the philosophy and the, and the understanding, and the, but it's at the core of the material reality of the demographic that it emerged from, period, point blank, full stop. A lot of that is translatable into other demographics and, and and you know it's 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 wide open especially the information that we present in public spaces but don't confuse this neo-romanticism with game yeah don't refuse don't confuse casanova and romeo with the mac and uh marvin gay don't confuse these don't even try to conflate these are two different universes yeah and don't that's confuse real Exactly. Don't don't try to conflate or confuse Eastern philosophy with Western the the, the classical Western philosophical tradition, and then call it all uh, you know philosophy and try to practice package it and brand it. Oh, it's a new age. No, let's be clear. You have to go to the source. And if we don't bring across something today in this, today's discussion, I want to bring across this. When it comes to foundational game, true game, not the commercial game. You, Ron Wills, and myself, okay, Cousin T, we are among the men who are the source material. We are the source material of foundational game. And that's very important to carry across when we are having these discussions and we are pinning down what the tenets and the subject matter and the curricula looks like when we talk about 
foundational game. That's where a lot of people get stuff twisted. Mm -hmm. When we talk about these traditions, when we talk about these philosophies and these the, these orientations and way of ways of engaging with reality, we need to clarify the BS. We need to clear all of these misconceptions and, uh, and these misclassified ideas and terminologies so that we can bring as many of our uh, mentees, our coaching clients, uh, and our students into this, what I call the gospel of game, okay? You got the gospel of game and you got the logic of lanes, okay? Uh, that, that's that's going to be, a, that's gonna be, you know, uh, a part of the vocabulary going forward. When we talk about the gospel of game, gospel comes from the spirit of the source of the material. And like I said, we are the source material. So we speak, the, we spit the gospel of game. When we talk about the logic of lane, we're talking about people who try to bring this commercialized, you know, artificial, generic, watered down version of what they think the game is. And that's why it doesn't connect. That's why people are like, oh, game, we don't need that. What is it anyway? That's why it's, it's yeah, necessary man. that we have these conversations and that we understand the various levels of the game. Because a lot of people aren't really clear about uh, what the levels are. Uh, of 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 the game uh, are um, in the in their totality, and so they don't even know where to start. Do yeah. do I start with learning pickup line? Do I start with learning you know body types? Do I start with learning identity? Do I start with you know this overall sort of um, a structure of reality? No, let's understand it. There's levels to these things, and when yeah. you come to the so the true source material the of, of foundational game you'll understand and appreciate elementary is at the bottom. Okay, let's, let's, let's discuss communication. Let's discuss your mating strategy or your mate strategy. Let's discuss uh, what your native skills are. Who are you at your core? Where did you start? What are, what are you adept at? Okay, Th that's elementary game. Now, let's go to intermediate game. Uh, what's your background? What's your family structure like? What's your class? What's your vocation? Uh, what are you looking for in a relationship? Are you looking for monogamy? Are you looking for ethical non-monogamy? Are you are you looking for situationships? Are you looking for a roster? Okay, Th those are different levels. That's that's the um, intermediate level of game. Then let we go to the advanced level of game, which we find ourselves um, bringing up just naturally in conversation. How do we qualify what real is? What is the nature of reality? But in order to do that, we have to have a basis for that, right? Mm -hmm. We have to understand who we are, what are the material conditions that formulate our reality? How does all, how do all of these levels come together and bring a, a sort of universal um, curriculum that allow us to mentor and to teach and to coach uh, men uh, on a path that keeps them solidly um, square and centered in an orientational position that allows them to master their masculinity. That's really at the core of what we um, identify as foundational game. All right, all right. You know what, and that's powerful. Once again, um, Cousin Tito on uh, May 26th, we'll be doing a webinar you're interested in coming, you got to go through the links uh, through uh, Cousin Tito's uh, Patreon, or you have to join uh, my Raw Brotherhood Patreon. Um, and the reason I do that, that's just an open link, or you can openly pay. Uh, just quite frankly, I want I want the serious people. Because we, we, we go deep, we go deep. Because one of the things, Cousin Tito, when you were talking about um, just the philosophy and everything, even what I present is a philosophy. And I've noticed that the Max, the Pimps, the True Players, the ASP, the Mr. Good Bars, they picked up my book right away. Now, the guys who are on, uh, what do you call that? The Logic of Lames? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they fight me the hardest yeah. to this day. They fight, and it used to, it used to vex me because I was like, I wrote this book for them. I've had, I've had some of them. They, they'll pick it up, read it and say, I don't agree with anything in here and criticize it, all that. But then 
you get a straight up true to the game Mac, pick it up. It's like, man, it's some good stuff right here, man. Hey, you know what's up, man. Hey, Mel Exotic Dancers pick it up. Shoot, they gave me a nickname for it. They were like, call me Gunslinger. They was like, yeah, you like that Gunslinger. Shoot, it was like, but then they understand just those levels. So, um, man, we, we hit y'all with a lot. We hit y'all with a lot. Definitely check out the links. Check out the, uh, join the Patreons uh, if you want to uh, be able to attend this webinar coming up. Uh, get Cousin Tito's book. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. And you know, there's always a link for my stuff. There's always a link for my stuff. So, and we we take it on. See, here's the thing. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to put it out there. We just operate on a different level. We just operate on a different level. In fact, Cousin Tito, after we finish recording, I, man, I'm gonna share something with you real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Got a situation. It's an interesting what I had to just laugh about it. And you kind of covered some of it today. <laughs> anyway, but uh, do you have any final thoughts that you want to share with everyone? No, I just want to make sure that, of course, everybody <clears throat> think about, uh, you know, attending that webinar on May 26th. Click the link down below. But understand that there's a difference when people when people say game, understand that there's a difference between foundational game to which we are the source material foundational black Americans, soul brothers, however you want to classify it. We are the source material for that as opposed to commercial game, which is pseudo romanticism. Okay. Mm -hmm. That that's one of the things that we want to make sure that we clarify beyond that. There are levels to this elementary level game, it, it, um, intermediate level game, advanced level game. And above that, God level game, which will be discussed uh, on the 26th of May. But salute to uh, the, the, the crowd, salute to everybody who can appreciate and take away, uh, you know, some, some gems from this particular discussion. And I definitely look forward to having more discussions going forward. All right. So thank you all for coming, uh, checking it out. Uh, definitely check out the webinar and the title of this joint was started off deep dive into the alpha showpiece. It's going to be now called the alpha showpiece and levels of game. So anyway, want to thank y'all as always. Peace and blessings. Peace.